Howdy from Destination Everywhere. We're roaming Wyoming, the cowboy state, and this is part four. We're right here in the Northwest USA. We're your hosts, Mandy, Orlando, and that's Abraham. In this video, we go to the northwestern part of the state, to Grand Teton National Park, to Grand Teton Mountains, String Lake, Jenny Lake, Schwabacher Landing, Mormon Row, Jackson Hole, Teton Village Gondola, and Corbett's Cabin. We'll see wildflowers and snow-capped mountains, pristine lakes, iconic historic buildings, and we go to the top of the mountain just for waffles. We do! We ride a chuck wagon for dinner in the middle of the woods, and we saddle up at the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar in Jackson Hole for some cocktails. And we'll tell you why Abraham is sulking in the bath. Jump in the car with us for this picture-perfect road trip. This is Grand Teton National Park, and it's easy to drive around with signs for turnouts everywhere, so you never miss a perfect shot. Well, this is not embarrassing at all. <laughs> Poor baby. There are signs everywhere telling you to be bear aware. Well, you don't have to tell me twice, unlike this crazy guy cycling alone in the Tetons without a care in the world. Talking of which, my friend David cycled from the Garden State to the Golden Gate, right through Wyoming, and wrote a book about it. Listen to how he describes the Tetons. The peaks, Grand, Middle and South Tetons, Mount Owens and Tiwanot, all spires fracture the sapphire sky as they rise uncloaked out of the sage plateau. Trees dress their feet, cling to a precious few places on their flanks, and disappear altogether halfway up their summits. Above that, it's all grey granite, dripping with snow couloirs, and glistening pure white under the sun. What great cataclysm created them with the gouged out sides, as raw as rock can be. Wow, how poetic was that? String Lake is shallow and crystal clear and the perfect place for hiking, swimming, kayaking, paddleboarding or just having a lakeside family picnic. There are no rentals here at the lake so you have to bring your own toys. Jenny Lake is a gem and the centerpiece of this national park, named after a Shoshone woman called Jenny Lee, who was married to an English fur trapper. It's a sad story. They had six children, but they all tragically died of smallpox at Christmas 1876. Jenny Lake's quite touristy and gets crowded. There's a visitor's center and even a lake shuttle to take you over to the other side, for those who like hiking. I like hiking, but I'm too scared of bears, especially when I see signs like these. And just remember that the weather in the Tetons can change dramatically and go from this to this very quickly. For that perfect shot of the Tetons with its mirror image reflected in the Snake River, photographers come to Schwabacher Landing, especially at sunrise and sunset. These were our best photos, but with the perfect weather and perfect lighting, these are the jackpot shots. Around the corner is the best place to see Tetons glaciers with the most gorgeous backdrop of green sagebrush and yellow arrowleaf balsam root. And yes, it's a member of the sunflower family. And then we come to Mormon Row, the signature site of Grand Teton National Park. Mormon settlers from Idaho came here to what was then the town of Gravant in the 1890s. They built farms, churches and schools and were a tight-knit community. And these are the iconic Malton barns built by brothers John and T.A. Malton. This was T.A.'s house, 
probably the most photographed barn in the whole world. And look who we found playing underneath, two fat fluffy peekers. So cute! And a few houses down is this pink house, and that was his brother John's home. Time to explore the town of Jackson, nestled in the Jackson Hole Valley. Downtown are covered sidewalks, and I was welcomed by a cuddle from this lovely grizzly. He's plastic, so it's okay. Crossing Broadway Avenue, we find the famous Jackson Town Square with its antler arches, and everyone wants this iconic photo before saddling up for a few drinks across the street. Don't miss this. Here we are at the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar in Jackson, Wyoming. This is my drink waiting for me. I guess. And here's my huckleberry A few huckleberry lemonades later, we walked back through town, hyper vigilant for grizzly bears. Don't laugh, the most famous grizzly nicknamed 399 was walking through the square with her four cubs in November 2021. True story. And we think that's why Abraham was hiding in the closet and sleeping in the bathtub. He definitely sensed the wildlife outside the cabin at night, but by day he cheered right up. Even though it's only June, we're going to the Teton Village Ski Resort to take the gondola up to the top of Rendezvous Mountain. As we make the ascent, the landscape is lush and green and it's just a little bit cloudy, but then it gets really cold, snow and ice are on the ground, the weather changes really quickly and we're freezing. The only way to warm up is at Corbett's Cabin, top of the world, Waffles. $8.25 was well spent and we had peanut butter and bacon flavoured waffles. Don't knock it, it was an absolutely fantastic flavour combination, washed down with piping hot chocolate. And you can even have a shot of whiskey if you're really cold. We were really cold and couldn't wait to get back down for dinner. How exciting! A chuck wagon dinner and we were being horse driven into the woods for a cowboy barbecue. After all the wagons arrive, we go into the rustic restaurant for an evening of food, drink and entertainment. The cowboys and the cowgirls serve us steak, potatoes, cowboy beans, corn and coleslaw. And then the country music begins. <laughs> And now everyone sing along. And 
on that country music note, that's a wrap for Roaming Wyoming Part 4. And if you had as much fun as we did, please subscribe to our channel, like, share and comment. Thank you for letting us share the world with the world and we'll see you soon in another state.